the expression two sides of the same coin refers to things that seem different but are actually related tragedy and comedy for example all love and hate i almost always cry when i'm happy <laughs> and my husband is always surprised and puzzled by my ability to cry in all situations even when i'm the happiest no one quite understands this paradox but it exists sadness and joy together two sides of the same coin or what about being an introvert and an extrovert they're different but we often can't tell them apart i'm here making a youtube of videos as an introvert in theory something i should shy away from but here i am i believe there is your natural state of being and a personality that you possess but it shouldn't mean that you can't use the opposite as a tool to enhance your abilities my family including yours truly have always been not very good travelers most of us are creatures of comfort and homeostasis traveling almost always turns everything upside down in my brain and my life and coming from a family of travelers who always prefer to reach the destination as fast as they can because the journey was so stressful i never really enjoyed holiday time but lately as i've fallen in love with someone who enjoys the journey more than the destination i have loosened up a bit or at least allowed myself to observe this looseness and fluidity that somebody like my husband possesses it has also helped me see and improve a side of my introvertness that i thought i could never be able to understand or accept life is a series of natural and spontaneous changes i have learned to accept best not to resist these changes i think it only causes sorrow and stress like when i began this project for a change of pace i really had no idea of what i was getting myself into emotionally or otherwise i was just too excited to fulfill a teenage bucket list wish which it did not really matter what or how i started but surely as i started and then fell into a chasm of chaos i realized i needed to be a bit more structured a bit more organized which i did and i think it only got better from there i often wonder why is there this distinction between us two creatures of habits extroverts and introverts turns out when you dig into it a bit it's not just made up there is a scientific theory behind it so there are two important chemicals found in all our brains dopamine and acetylcholine dopamine is like a hit of energy and we get a dose of it and we take risks or meet new people this makes extroverts feel great and energized but introverts are more sensitive to dopamine and get quickly overstimulated Okay. Picture this feeling of entering a room with a large crowd when they all turning to look at you because you are in their space. Understandable, natural even, but as an introvert, all those eyes on you 
and you can feel the sweat break on your neck, the panic rise in your eyes and the desire to run out of the room more and more appealing. Whereas an extrovert would welcome the eye contact so they can approach a person without any worries. That's why introverts like me and perhaps some of you watching this video enjoy the more slow burn feeling we get when our brain releases acetylcholine. That happens when we concentrate, read or paint or cook, make extremely complicated DIY miniature models. It makes us feel relaxed, alert and content but it barely registers with extroverts. And just with that inclusion of knowledge in my mind and my life, I understand myself so much better. I am deeply grateful for who I am as a person. And on many occasions, I understand I can be socially awkward and very isolated. But that's okay, I think. I'm not pretending. I don't have to prove to the world, look, I fit in. When I am with myself, I don't compromise on my creativity. I can let my imagination run and my ideas grow. My natural state of being, my introvertness is dear to me and as we talked about it is a way for me to relax and unwind. But that doesn't mean the opposite variation of myself doesn't exist. Um, let me try and explain my ramblings. So in my day job I work with people. Most of the time my job um, involves making impactful connections and talking with people and helping them feel welcome and important. It sounds like an extrovert's dream job, but an introvert is going about it and doing a decent job if I should say so myself. <laughs> is this my natural state of being? No. but. Am I looking at it as perhaps a skill that I could learn, an intellectual strategy that I can build for myself? Absolutely. As a timid introvert, speaking up, addressing a crowd or even being slightly authoritarian is similar to me attempting a cliff dive into the abyss. But I'm trying to do those extravagant things and building a part of myself that helps me to be more comfortable and attached to my true self. I have accepted that I can be mediocre at addressing a crowd or giving out instructions or leading and not beat myself up over it because that's not who I am. What I have to be the best at is my true self, what comes naturally to me and just continue to build the other half of me as a skill and eventually I will build on something that is a customized version of my life that I can truly enjoy. Having a personality that appreciates a slow burn approach to reviving your mind, I think also produces one of our most treasured traits as an introvert, the ability to listen. When reading about introversion, the one thing that will come up 
on every blog and every conversation is how good introverts are at listening listening is a powerful tool that creates meaningful connections with the speaker in fact re- research shows that introverts tend to experience great boost in feelings of social connectedness when engaging in intimate conversations Speaking of listening, I have always ever had few friends, but our connections were deep. Most of my friends don't live close by to me anymore. <laughs> Some of them don't even live on the same continent. But our friendship is decades long. We can pick up where we left off the last time we met, which is not that often. Sometimes years go by and there is no awkwardness or change in the way me as an introvert behaves with my friend. It's always confusing, you know. Sometimes you hear people say you can only have one or two friends in your lifetime that possess such deep connections. But I have only ever made friends that fit into the above. before i went on this self discovering journey let's say i was ashamed to let people know that i want to be alone because i was not sure why i felt like it and i didn't want to make them my friends feel bad or hurt about it but now i love spending time alone i have a greater understanding of why i need this and the people close to me also know this because i explained it to them now and they appreciate it so don't expect them to magically understand what you feel talk to them and then give them time to adjust understand and i promise they will return back to you with a better point of view what i'm trying to put together and explain not very well but i'm trying <laughs> is that now that i know myself better and i treat my introversion more as a gift and not a flaw i can also appreciate the extrovert personality without resentment it's different to me but why should it mean that it's other a pariah in actuality you realize it's not other but a different side of yourself of the same coin <laughs> one side is a natural almost nonchalant way of being while the other a skill set that can be learned to habituate your life over time We need both to exist in a balance that is curated for your own life. The beautiful thing about the world we live in today is that there is no staunch notion of one kind of person. I have begun to enjoy the intensity and chaos of the world that I get exposed to, sometimes by choice and sometimes by necessity. 
this world of bursting energy that houses extroverts. My husband's an extrovert and I'm so grateful he is in my life. Look, he's here helping me out. <laughs> I can't imagine my life without him and I can also appreciate the other side of the world through him. And it's been eye-opening and magical. At the end of the day, it's in the quiet spaces and cozy nooks where I feel truly at home. Yes, the world feels more heavily filled and made for extroverts, but introverts have their niche too and you can find it. I think you and some, some of you and I are proof of that. At the end of the day, we are all our own things. So, to paraphrase Victor Linau, diamonds are formed under pressure, sure, but bread dough rises when you let it rest. <laughs>